is just fantastic. Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people, the very first of 2024. How exciting! Today we're going to start with a continuation on the discussion of Natalie Reynolds, who we discussed, I believe, last week, either in the EOSP or TWAT, or X, TWAX, TWIX, one of those. She had gone to the gym, begging attention, and while doing so, did it with a painted on bodysuit thing, while wearing a swimsuit to obviously preserve her modesty. When she went to the gym, vlogging this uh, idea, she was called out by a regular gym goer, a rather jacked man, who quite clearly said that looked wrong, you shouldn't be doing that in the gym. And I agree, you work up a sweat in the gym, that paint is going to run off, rub off, make others want to, maybe. But, you know, white trash, you know, it's unlikely. But the paint will still come off regardless, also it's not very classy. It does hop onto the bandwagon of people wearing incredibly tight outfits at the gym, where I have, as last week stated, pointed out that you could see someone's IUD because of how tight and pointlessly tight it is. I am going to judge harshly because I'm allowed to and I've stopped caring about not judging anymore. This, according to Natalie Reynolds, was a social experiment and as an update to it, Natalie has apologised. While writing on social media, I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgement and I don't expect to be forgiven, I am simply here to apologise. Some of the responses to this took my interest, and I thought we'd go through a few of those before we move on to talk about Claudine Gay. Imagine thinking even one person was about to be on your side. The gym should have just banned you. Now this one's an interesting one, because if this was your regular gym, it's possible you told them ahead of time, but it's equally likely you didn't tell anyone, and so this has just created a problem by going to a random gym. As he should, you were in the wrong. If the rules weren't clear enough, then gym etiquette should be obvious to you. People are there for gains, not whatever this is. You deserved to be ridiculed, bar none. The guy is right. Imagine a man walking around the gym like this, he would be kicked out and banned for life. No hate or anything, but what was she even doing going into the gym with painted pants? Posing, that was the point of it. The social experiment, to see where men's eyes wander. Or ladies, of course. To be honest, I think it was done solely for the outrage, knowing the views were guaranteed. And if they didn't get the views from it, then they could just claim that, you know, sexism, or take their experiment elsewhere and waste more money doing it. That video of the initial social experiment got over 40 million views. I think you should have been banned. Simple as, really. So there has been quite the controversy concerning Claudine Gay and plagiarism at Harvard University, and how Harvard University had tried to sweep it under the rug by declaring her innocent before the investigation had even taken place. Intellectual rigour must be maintained, must be upheld. It must be to maintain the integrity of academia. If it is ignored, then academic integrity goes in the drain. It becomes undermined under the guise of, and then insert belief system here, because that's what it is. If you're willing to fob it off, it is because you have subscribed to a belief system, and in doing so, are seeking to undermine a very important tenet of, well, academia, to protect an individual, it's virtue signalling on a grander scale. On Twitter, AP had tweeted, Harvard President's resignation highlights new conservative weapon against colleges, plagiarism. It's not a weapon and it shouldn't be something solely for conservatives. It should be for everyone because plagiarism should not be accepted. You cannot progress if you're ripping off other people without properly crediting them in your work. That was what Claudine Gay had failed to do. Readers, though, added context to this. Plagiarism is a breach of the rules for Harvard University. Claudine Gay was ultimately forced to resign for a series of breaches of this policy. Plagiarism, or application of the rules around plagiarism, therefore cannot be considered a weapon. If you think that that is a weapon, you have told me you have no interest, no investment in academia without actually having to tell me that you are not involved in academia in the slightest. You're the type that thinks that everyone should get a participation medal simply for turning up, or be given a degree because of the colour of their skin, because of their sexuality, because of their gender identity, because of their faith, rather than putting in the hard work to do the job properly. A reputation like Claudine Gay's has been absolutely annihilated because they refused to do what they were supposed to have done over many decades of doing it. I promise you I can rant about this all day. But let's go to the AP article 
get more context before we continue. The downfall of Harvard's president has elevated the threat of unearthing plagiarism, a cardinal sin in academia as a possible new weapon in conservative attacks on higher education. If it is the conservatives that are doing this, then the conservatives are in the right. Because as you have pointed out, it is a cardinal sin in academia. Why are the progressives not doing this as well then? Why are they so desperate to sweep it under the rug? You've already created the line, I'm now going to point at the obvious discrepancy. Claudine Gay's resignation Tuesday followed weeks of mounting accusations that she lifted language from other scholars in her doctoral dissertation and journal articles. The allegations surfaced amid backlash over her congressional testimony about anti-Semitism on campus. The plagiarism allegations came not from her academic peers but her political foes, who sought to oust her and put her career under intense scrutiny. Or well, they found a fatal flaw, and they were right. So it doesn't matter what their political leaning is, they've just proven somebody in a very much vaunted position did not deserve to be there. Of course, I don't like that it was a political motivation that led to it, but once under that lens, she was found wanting. I'm going to quote, because I've done this before, Sam Seaborn of the West Wing, because it's applicable here. Education is the silver bullet. Education is everything. We don't need little changes, we need gigantic monumental changes. Schools should be palaces, competition for the best teachers should be fierce. They should be making six-figure salaries, school should be incredibly expensive for government and absolutely free of charge to its citizens. Competition for the best teachers should be fierce. In this, you had a Harvard professor who was not the best, because they failed a very key aspect of their work, and that was to cite their sources. I'm sure many people have done this before in the past, had to submit works at colleges and schools, universities, and if you use sources, it should be advisable, or it is advised, you cite everything so that your work can be properly scrutinized and you can be given the grade you deserve for your work. Claudine did not do that. Christopher Rufo, a conservative activist who helped orchestrate the effort, celebrated her departure as a win in his campaign against elite institutions of higher education. It is a win, quite frankly. If Harvard want to maintain their claim that they're one of the greatest or best in the world, it would do them good to maintain the academic rigor and integrity of academic standards. Then they are no good than a swimming pool that has been converted into a college, or getting a certificate of achievement from McDonald's. Although at least with that one, you could argue you can use it in the workplace. Perhaps even frame it and be very proud of the fact you produce shit and are honest about it up front, as opposed to Harvard that just produce crap like this. The reputation of Harvard has taken a knock because of this, and they should be ashamed of themselves for failing to investigate it properly, for clearing Claudine before even investigating, and then failing to act when the investigation showed they done goofed. I don't care of the political leaning of anyone involved in this. I care that the cardinal rules of academic rigor are maintained. If they are not, then you are not an academic institution worth being supported. I thought now what I'd do for a little light-hearted banter is play a video that was tweeted by Undoomed, who had simply said, Feminist discovers biology, lol. I must be pretty weak-willed because all it took was falling in love with a man and now I'm like, not really, I mean, I'm a feminist, but like kind of. I don't really need my maiden name. I don't really need it. I like your last name better anyway. Like, I'll just take that. I know he can do his own laundry. I know that he can clean the house, but I want to do it for him. I want to cook all his meals. I want to make sure he's getting all his whole grains, all his vegetables. I want to make sure he's getting all that protein. He has not asked any of this of me. It just kind of naturally kicks in. Like these instincts just kind of come out of like, oh, now I have to take care of you when you're sick. Oops, I made you breakfast and it fits all of your dietary requirements. I know that this video can be seen as a bit of a self-own in that respect, identifying as a feminist and the independence of it. Reality is actually it's something quite common amongst all humans. You have your own beliefs, you have your own ideas of life and how you want to live it. When you pair up with another person though, your beliefs are shared and so your priorities change as well. Things you did want or didn't want change as well or are open to negotiation to change. That's what a good relationship does. You both change, and it's why many people, a vast majority, pair up and settle down, as it is often dubbed. I know there's a joke in here, and I could make it, so we'll consider this an honourable mention. There is nothing wrong with changing your beliefs, for the most part, to invest in something different because you've realised how good it is for you. And good on you for finding somebody. See, I'm going to be nice sometimes, right? I'll be a dickhead for the next one, though, don't worry. USA Boxing has come under fire. It has come under fire because it has made changes to its 
policy concerning transgendered athletes. This has led to some backlash. I thought what I'd do is go through those changes. A boxer who transitions from male to female is eligible to compete in the female category under the following conditions. 1. The athlete has declared that her gender identity is female and has completed gender reassignment surgery. 2. The athlete, for a minimum of four years after surgery, has had quarterly hormone testing and presents USA Boxing documentation of hormone levels. 3. The athlete must demonstrate that her total testosterone level in serum has been below 5 for at least 48 months prior to her first competition brackets with the requirement for any longer period to be based on a confidential case-by-case -case evaluation considering whether or not 48 months is a sufficient length of time to minimize any advantage in women's competition close brackets or the athlete's total testosterone level in serum must remain below five throughout the period of desired eligibility to compete in the female category and compliance with these conditions will be monitored by testing at the expense of the athlete in the event of non-compliance the athlete's eligibility for female competition will be suspended for 12 months. Retesting of testosterone levels will then be required. A boxer who transitions from female to male is eligible to compete in the male category under, and that's where it ends on this end. I don't know why the image doesn't continue. My apologies, folks. Apparently, Archive did a fail. One of the more outspoken critics of this is Riley Gaines, who has been very critical of the likes of Leah Thomas and any transgendered athlete competing with the gender they identify with. I have said multiple times that I feel there's going to have to be a third category for those who identify as trans, which wouldn't be ideal because it identifies them as other, which is not what you want in the slightest. But to maintain the standards of sport and to protect all involved, those advantages that are granted to you through biology can only be limited to an extent. And as we've seen from the World Athletics Committees, Olympics, for example, are banning. They're outright banning. They are limiting the ability of those who are trans to compete at higher levels because the advantages are now being proven to be far too significant, even when the testosterone level is reduced. Riley Gaines said, of course we all know this. I don't even have to have a science degree to know this. This is basic common knowledge. Warning that this policy compromises the safety of women, by the way, and does not represent progress. Continuing, and let me be the first to say, women are not just a testosterone level. We're not just men who merely don't have male genitalia, which is the policy that USA Boxing has in place now. Of course, we know in regard to this topic, we know about the unfair competition aspect, but the safety of women has been compromised by USA's boxing's new policies and guidelines. And I think my biggest problem with this new implementation is that we are now glorifying men. We're calling them champions. We're giving them titles, they're winning prize money for punching women in the face. That's the purpose of boxing or MMA. Any fighting sport that requires physical contact like boxing does, we're glorifying that. We're calling it progressive. Make no mistake, this is not progress. This is not moving us in the positive forward direction. This is incredibly regressive. This is taking us back in time and it is utterly misogynistic. Years ago, and it does get brought up from time to time, Fallon Fox, a mixed martial artist, male to female, was battering somebody who had spoken ill of them, cracked their skull for it male to female trans, and a biological woman. While the biological woman had said something that was a bit of a slight towards Fallon Fox, leaving them with a fractured skull was not the way to go about it. Many had considered, oh, what about Ronda Rousey against Fallon Fox? That'll be a fight. And Ronda Rousey said, uh, nah, and rightly so. That was before she got knocked out by Holly Holm, by the way. It was a while ago. And Fallon Fox has since retired. This discussion of inclusivity in sports is not going to end until people are willing to have the discussion that has to be had, rather than being seen to look good by appealing to people of communities. Instead, have the discussion that is not an easy one with everyone at the table. Grow the f up and simply talk about this and actually listen to every voice. When someone says something you don't agree with, you don't put your fingers in the ears and say, you're being hateful, I must cancel you. No, you have the discussion and you work it out. Anything worth doing is difficult. If it's easy, it's not worth doing. And that's what you see from the virtue signalers in this. USA Boxing is letting itself down. The argument of testosterone level has been debunked in other sports already. So I don't know why USA Boxing is so behind on this. Or desperate to be behind on it. Although I can surmise it has something to do with USA Powerlifting uh, having to uh, be inclusive because they were told they had to be. Let's finish with something a bit more light-hearted. Mathematics. I know. Academia, it seems like there's a bit of a theme going on here. Not much of one, but it somehow semi-ties in. Yeah. 
A pair of mathematicians studied the UK National Lottery and figured out a combination of 27 tickets that guarantees you'll always win. There are 45,057,474 possible combinations to win the lottery. After announcing these 27 tickets as the guarantee to winning, you would think, well then, the mathematics is on your side. We're dealing with very complex probabilities, so you must have some kind of trick up your sleeve, and 27 tickets could be 27 very unique combinations. So people played this. David Cushing and David Stewart at the University of Manchester used a mathematical field called finite geometry. Finite geometry in its most basic form is any geometric system that has only a finite number of points. It gets a little more complicated if I insert the word Euclidean geometry, which is familiar but not the same, because it's not finite. They placed each of the lottery numbers from numbers 1 to 59 in pairs or triplets on a point within one of five geometrical shapes, then used them to generate lottery number tickets based on the lines within the shapes. The five shapes offered 27 such lines, meaning that 27 tickets will cover every possible winning combination of two numbers, which is the minimum needed to win a prize. Each ticket costs two pounds. The pair had announced that had they played, they would have won about 1,800 pounds, which is not bad. That would have been back on the 21st of June. They received a mountain of emails from people who had pointed out to them, essentially, they hadn't won much at all and got a free go at another try. Because it turns out this model they created wasn't as good as you might have thought. Of course, if you're going to invest £54 into 27 tickets, there is a chance, yes, you are going to win a fairly sizable amount of money. But people aren't going to put 54 quid down because of some rather interesting geometry. People followed their rules of their um, findings as a suitable warning, David Stewart had stated that if every single man, woman and child in the UK bought a separate ticket, we'd only have a quarter chance of someone winning the jackpot. So mathematics essentially cannot make the UK lottery a wise investment. Please don't waste your money. It, unless you want to risk it for the uh, off chance, of course, that you could improve yourself. But I would point out cost of living has gone right up and poor people who win the lottery invariably blow it on dumb shit.